What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Kakis and today we are going to be showcasing the brand new Season of the Seraph featured exotic weapon, the Manticore Submachine Gun. This is available either immediately upon purchasing the Seasons Pass or at level 35 if you're on that free to play grind. So I thought I would do a video taking a look at this thing for those people either on the grind or maybe considering buying that Seasons Pass. Alright, now just before we get started here, a lot of you guys may remember that me and Mtash had a competition. Who could sell the most advanced GG? Well, you guys blew his fans out of the water. So as a result, I get to give away an advanced GG mini fridge to one of you guys. Simply click the link in the description down below, enter the giveaway, and yeah, win a free mini fridge. Alright, now, as for the Manticore submachine gun, this is going to be a void 900 rounds per minute SM. SMG, which is very meta. 900 RPM SMGs, stuff like the Funnel Web, the Callus Mini Tool, you guys know they slap. So we're off to a good start. The intrinsic trait is going to be Soaring Fang. Dealing damage while grounded charges anti grav repulsors. Dealing damage while airborne extends anti grav repulsors. Uh, what? Well, let's move on to the other perks here. You're then going to have the next unique trait, Swooping Talons. Dealing damage while airborne increases this weapon's damage output. So, in-game, how does that all actually work? Well, the first thing you're probably going to notice when using this weapon is on the left corner of your screen, there's a bar that's labeled Anti-Grav Repulsor. And then when you do damage and get kills while on the ground, this bar will actually charge. It'll go up and up and up. Then if you jump into the air, you aim down sights, nothing is going to happen. However, if you deal damage, either hip fire or ADS, then you will notice you will float in the air and you will continuously float in the air as long as you are doing damage. Now there is a seemingly some sort of timer to this because while I've been doing damage in the past I will drop down to the ground but as you can see you can remain in the air for a pretty significant length of time. Now, obviously that length is significantly determined by how much you've charged up your anti-grav repulsor beforehand by doing damage on the ground. However, even if you get it to like that first tick, you can still fight a whole group of enemies completely in the air, it feels like. Like, the depreciation is actually pretty slow, especially, as the perk says, if you're doing damage while in the air, it's gonna slow that depreciation. So again, like, you are really able to be in the air floating around for what feels like an entire encounter as long as you just engage just a few enemies on the ground beforehand. But... There's another big reason why you want to be in the air, and that is the increase to damage. Now, it isn't an on-off switch. You won't immediately get increased damage while in the air, but rather the damage increase is going to ramp up and up and up as you continue to do damage in the air. So, let's take a look at what that damage increasing value really is. So, as you can see right here, I'm fighting this knight on the ground, a headshot does 1056 damage, that's a base level. Then, as I jump into the air, I'm gonna start out actually with that value and then do more and more, I'm doing, you know, 1200 damage, 1300 damage, and it's going to cap out at 1000. 1478 damage and that is pretty much a perfect 40 percent damage increase now again it's 40 percent more at the max so the actual raw increased damage is going to be a bit less than that because you have to ramp up to that 40 percent max on a single target but still you know by the end of the day you are doing 40 percent more damage that's pretty significant like, Kill Clip now only does, what, 25% damage? So, that is a pretty big number you can eventually get to. And, especially with a 900 RPM uh, SMG, 
the raw damage output from that archetype is very good. That's part of the reason why it's such a meta archetype. So yeah, don't scoff on that damage increase. It's definitely worth doing. And that really comes into play with this exotic. Something very important is that you don't have to jump way up into the air. If you just do a little bunny hop, like you just press jump once and then you start, you know, doing damage, you're going to float around a couple feet above the ground. And then you can take advantage of this massive damage increase. So this is a really interesting exotic overall. Definitely it is playing with, you know, airborne effectiveness, airborne combat. That is a huge, like, point of contention in the community right now. A lot of PvP players really don't like airborne uh, effectiveness as a stat. They feel like it ruins, you know, aerial gameplay. This weapon was clearly designed to take advantage of aerial gameplay. Now, will it be any good in PvP? I mean, you can certainly, you know, ambush people in some interesting ways. The problem is that you have to do damage like first for it to activate the anti-grav repulsor and therefore you can't like float around a corner like you can as perhaps a solar warlock, right? With uh, the wings of sacred dawn or something like that where you're floating up in a crazy area you're waiting for someone to come around a corner and ambush them because they're not expecting you to be up floating in the sky, right? But you can't really do that with this exotic because you have to be doing damage to start floating. Even with all of that being said, however, if you're jumping up in the air and you just get like one shot on an enemy and you simply stop falling down, for a lot of people, that's going to confuse them. They're expecting you to fall back down. They're, they're a point of aim is probably going to be going down expecting you to fall down in front of them and then suddenly you're in the air and you're staying in the air. Oh, and by the way, you're getting an up to 40% increased damage on them. So maybe it could be used in those type of scenarios. Not to mention, this exotic seems like it would combine well with builds designed for aerial combat. Like the Wings of Sacred Dawn I just mentioned, could using that plus this give you some pretty insane capabilities. Well, certainly it would let you remain in the air for a ridiculously long time. Something like the Lion Ramparts for the Titan, letting you jump quite a bit more. Now you're using this thing, you're really engaging people up from the air. In PvE as well, being able to engage from the air, get some interesting angles, it will let you completely avoid melee units. Think of explosive shanks. Think of thrall. You can literally just hover in the air above them and destroy you won't even be touched by them so in certain encounters this could be very very good but with all of that being said there's also a high probability that this is more of a gimmick than a really meta exotic uh, it's definitely really fun and unique to use however being a slow floating target in the air and only activating the float with damage could definitely be the drawbacks of this weapon. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, Always have a good day.